Welcome students, this is our seventh video in our countdown to star. It's over linear inequalities. There are two types of inequalities we're going to talk about. There's single variable and then there's two variable. Um, but both of them use the same symbols. Okay. This is less than and this is less than or equal to. The little line under it is half of your equal sign, so that's the equal to part. Um, to help kids remember which one is which, if you look at the less than symbol, see how it kind of looks like an L, so that is less than. The other two go the other direction, and this is greater than. And then the one with the line under it is greater than or equal to. Variable inequalities. Uh, well actually, let's start out with the faces that we learned in class. Okay, most teachers showed these two faces in class. Less than and greater than. Use open circles and have dotted lines. Less than or equal to and greater than or equal to have closed circles and solid lines. And so we we'll use these in all of the things that we do with our inequalities. So single variable inequality just means that it has one letter in it. So single variable inequality would look something like this. 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 15. Okay. So when we have these, we solve for the only letter that's there. And we use the same things that we did um, when we were doing equations at the beginning of the year. When you see a plus 3, you do minus 3. Those cancel out. 15 minus 3 is 12. Symbol stays the same. 2x. When it's beside it, we divide it. So I divide both sides by 2. And I get x is less than or equal to 6. It uses this face. So we know that we are using a closed-in circle at 6. So this would be 6, this would be 7, that would be 5. We'd have a closed-in circle at 6. This arrow points to the left, so we draw our arrow to the left. Okay. Let's take a look at one that has a negative number, negative 3x minus 6 greater than 18. You draw your line down. We still box what we're solving for, the only variable we have here, and it doesn't have to be x, it could be y or z or w or any letter. Plus 6 to both sides. 6 is cancel, bring down your negative 3x, bring down your greater than, 18 plus 6 is 24. When it's beside it, we divide it, so I divide both sides by negative 3. Those cancel. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you must flip the inequality, so our inequality flips to be a less than. 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8. Okay. So this one uses this face, which is an open circle. So if this were negative 8, that'd be negative 9, that'd be negative 7. We'd have an open circle at negative 8. That points to the left, so we draw to the left. So these are single variable inequalities. Okay. So our two variable or regular linear, linear inequalities look more like this. 2x plus 3y less than or equal to... 6. So we have two variable inequalities. Our goal is going to be to isolate the y and get it by itself. These are the ones where we have shading and we have solid and we have dotted lines. Okay. So the one thing we know when, immediately when we look at that, if it has that underneath it, it's automatically a solid line and it's never going to change. Okay. The other thing you can look at is if you look at the value of the coefficient of y, the number in front of y, if it's a positive number, then this symbol is not going to flip. So I can look at this and already tell since that's a plus 3y, I'm going to be divided by 3y, so that's going to stay less than. And less than means shade down. Okay, So I already know this is a solid line and shade down. So in a, on a star question, I'm already getting rid of responses that don't have solid lines and don't have shade down. And, but after that, we do have to solve it, so I subtract 2x from both sides. In my class, we don't line up the 6 and the negative 2x because they're not like terms, and so we don't want to get uh, tricked into combining them. This becomes 3y, less than or equal to. When I get to this stage, you can really write it as 6 minus 2x if you want, but I like to think of it as mx plus b, and so I put the negative 2x part first and the 6 second. Then the last step, when it's beside it, I divide it. So I divide everything by 3, and so y is less than or equal to. Negative 2 divided by 3, math 1 enter in my calculator. It says stay negative 2 thirds. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay. 
So if I were graphing this on the calculator, the slow, oh, sorry, on the calculator, I would just type it in and do shade below. But by hand, I'd have to look at the slope as negative two thirds, and the b is two because this is mx plus b. And if I were going to graph this, you'd go up two units. That'd be your first dot. Then a slope of negative two over three means you're going to go down two over one, two, three. So your next dot would be there. This is a solid line. And we're supposed to shade down so that this is the downside over here. Okay. And like I said, you could type this into your calculator and get a pretty good idea uh, of what it looks like in your calculator as well. The next thing they do once they have these is they ask you questions about um, if certain things are solution. So this red dot is a solution, is a solution. On the line is okay if it's a solid line. So because this is a solid line, it's okay. But over here, anything in this non-shaded area, these are not solutions over here. So not solutions. Okay. All right, let's take a look at one more. Let's say we have negative 2x minus 2y less than 4. So I'm going to box this, draw my line down. I know some things I know so far is because of this symbol right here, it's going to be a dotted line. So I know it's a dotted line for sure. I can also look at my coefficient of y. I know that it's going to flip. So this is less than now, but it's going to be greater than in the end. So I know that this is shade up. Shade up. It's going to be at least. Okay. From then I'm going to go through my steps, plus 2x to both sides. Bring down my negative 2y, bring down my less than. Rewrite this in mx plus b form, so that's 2x plus 4. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. And this is what causes the flip. So that becomes y. That becomes greater than, which is my shade up. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1x. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. My m is negative 1 over 1. My b is negative 2. So I have everything I need now. I draw my line over here. I'm going to go down 2 to start my first dot. Then from there, a slope of negative 1, that means down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. And so this is a dotted line. And I'm shade up, so that is this side over here. All right. Now if I were looking at solutions, this blue dot, the origin, is a solution. This blue dot is a solution. On the line, not a solution. On the line, not a solution. On the line, not a solution. Over here, not a solution. Not a solution. On the line, not a solution. You cannot be on the line and be a solution. And the star test knows that the kids have confusion with that, so they almost never ask about in the shading or out of the shading. They always put one or two of the dots on the line to see if you really know what uh, you're doing with your inequalities. All right, that's uh, the end of it.